Okay, call to order the public budget hearing June 27th, 2022. Uh, we are being recorded, so there's no need to take roll, but I will note um, that we have Director Saul joining us remotely, and also uh, Interim Superintendent Kyle Lair is joining us remotely. The first item on the agenda is introduction of the Budget Committee approved 2022-23 budget. I do believe that Superintendent Lair may have some comments to make prior. Um, Superintendent Lair, would you like to make those comments now or continue with the agenda? Yes, thank you, Director Philpott. I just want to do a real quick check to make sure that you can hear me. Yes, we can. Perfect. Thank you so much. I appreciate the opportunity. I just wanted to make a really quick statement because um, over the last couple of weeks, I've received several email communications. Um, and I believe we may also have some patrons that are here tonight with concerns that our budget has a plan to cut the bilingual program at Gardner Middle School. Um, and I just wanted to take a quick moment um, just to state this again, that the, the school district does not have plans to cut the bilingual program at Gardner Middle School going into next year. So I just wanted to make sure I had an opportunity to state that once again, because um, I know we have some in our community that are concerned uh, that that's the plan going into next year. Thank you, Chair Philpott. Thank you. Okay, moving on to the first agenda item, introduction of the Budget Committee approved 2022-23 budget. Who will be presenting today on that? I can. You can? I can. Very good. The 22-23 approved budget is posted online and available uh, and was approved at the last board meeting. And is that the uh, budget that is included in the resolution? That's correct. Okay. That we were provided prior to this hearing. Correct. Okay, and that would be uh, resolution 2122-254 specifically? It would be resolutions 253 through 255. Okay. Are there any comments or questions regarding the budget? Hearing none, um, are there any further comments from the cabinet regarding the budget or Superintendent Lair? Okay, thank you very much. Moving on to the next agenda item, that is patron input. I don't see Ms. Normand here, so is it Mr. Sweeten who's, oh, okay. Um, I just wanted to let you know you have nine electronic submissions um, in front of you. Eight of them are related to the bilingual program, and one is related to staffing and programs. Um, there were There is no Zoom patron input, and um, Mr. Sweeten will handle in person. Great. Thank you, Mr. Sweeten. All right. Do you have three patron inputs? Um, I'll first read the guidelines. For the procedures for public participation in meetings, the Oregon State School District Board of Education highly values public input in making important decisions that affect Oregon City's children and community. To ensure the public has an opportunity to offer comment during school board meetings and to ensure that the board can conduct the important business of the district, speakers must observe certain basic rules of conduct. The following guidelines apply to all public comment. All members of the public attending school board meetings must treat each other and the board with respect. No hate speech is allowed. Individuals are not permitted to engage in conduct that interferes with the ability of the individuals to observe the board meetings, interferes with the ability of other members of the public to offer comment to the board, or interferes with the ability of the board to conduct its business. Members of the public may offer objective criticism of school operations and programs but the board will not hear complaints concerning specific school personnel or other authorized individuals. Complaints of this nature shall be addressed through public complaints policy KL-AR. Please keep your comments concise as you will have three minutes to speak. You will receive a one minute warning. Please state your name and affiliation with the district. All right. Thank you. Okay. First patron. Uh, Carla Law. 
Thank you, Ms. Law. Make sure that um, the green button is, or light is illuminated on your microphone. Mm -hmm. Turned on. Okay. Again, I'll start over. My name is Carla Laws. I live in Oregon City. I have three kids in the bilingual program, um, or have been. I just had one graduate. Um, my concerns are uh, hearing changes happening, and I have volunteered in my kids' classes since my oldest was in kindergarten. Um, I've seen the program itself. You know, we're talking about the school district in general wanting equity and inclusion, right? Like, this program is the reason we have diversity. This represents our Latino community. And with my kindergartner this year, I've seen more families from South America than I've ever seen before. It's wonderful. A kid from Panama. I was excited. Um, so what I'm concerned about is I've graded, you know, I've helped the teachers grade. I've seen the intervention of having, I'm not talking about my kid because my kid has a great experience and opportunity, but I'm talking about first speaking Spanish families and what they need. And I've seen the impact of grading and seeing what the intervention of the program does and gives opportunity for first speaking Spanish families and kids. That English is very hard to learn. And you know, I've seen my kids go through the program um, I've seen how much the middle school has helped continue the language. I mean, the kids can finish the program and take the stamp test, technically, and they know more from the middle school program than they do in the high school. And a lot of that had to do with Keeley Rock. And whomever now, you know, we've had different people come in, and Cindy's been wonderful, and I can't imagine that we're talking about, you know, oh, equity inclusion, and we're not keeping this program. This program has been around for over 30 years. I've met people that are over 30 years old One that minute. went through this program. One minute. And I don't understand how this could change, or you can't change it to where the kids from the bilingual program kind of blend in because they're going to lose what they've learned. I've seen it. Like my daughter from COVID, my oldest, could have taken the stamp test, and you had first speaking Spanish kids who could not pass the stamp test after high school, but they could have after middle school. I am telling you that this program needs to continue the way it was, and that the teachers invested. Um, we're talking about you know, measuring what's important or not. This is crucial that this program continues. It gave us a step up as a district, and to diminish that, by eliminating it or changing it from what it is, it's not the same, and it's not what we signed up for. And I'm asking you and begging you to examine the budget, not only for us, you know, all our kids, but especially the first speaking Spanish families. Your time is up. Thank you, Ms. Laws, for being here. Yeah, and we need to care about these kids. We need to care about Ms. Laws, representing your time is up. Thank you for being here our families, and that is including our Hispanic and- Ms. Laws, I need to keep time fair for everybody. I know, I'm just everybody. finishing my last little statement. It's, it's Director Philpott who's speaking to you. Oh, sorry, sorry. It's okay. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, for, for the fairness of everybody, we afford three minutes. Okay, I'm sorry. We've given you those three minutes, and we added the extra time because you did have to start over. Okay, um, so, so I'm sorry. I need you to conclude I, your, yep, your comment. I appreciate you all listening to me, and thank you very much. Thank you. All right, your next patron is Sarah Lennon. Thank you. The, hi, Ms. Lennon. Hi. Thank you for being here. Okay. All right, I, um, I'm Sarah Lennon, and I have two students, one in middle school right now and one in Candy Lane. I was also, I'm a community member, and I was also a former teacher for a year in um, Jennings Lodge, and I stepped into one of the roles that, in crisis, a, a teacher had left, and so I took that over. I understand that there is kind of a crisis going on with hiring uh, qualified bilingual teachers. 
um, I intimately understand the workings of, of what goes on with that and how hard it is, and, you know. But uh, so I had mainly some questions for you guys. I just want some clarity, um, especially with Kyle Layer's statement. I, I get that they're trying. I get that OCSD is trying to keep the program. But with one teacher on staff, that's not a bilingual program. And I don't see, we're concerned at how you're going to maintain a quality bilingual program with one teacher. And I see that you posted a position in middle school, but that's hard to fill in the summertime. It's, it's a very uh, specific role. It requires a lot more skill than um, I would say probably the elementary school, just the level of Spanish is, is more rigorous, okay? So I'm just gonna go with my questions because I would just like to know a couple things of how the school fits into your budget. Um, how is the district support for the Todos Unidos K through 8 program reflected in the budget? I would like some specifics. How are the funds allocated for, are, are there any funds allocated for recruitment and, of qualified bilingual educators? Okay. Is there active recruitment going on right now, currently? And if, if not, why? Okay. Um, how are the funds being re, uh, received from the state and federal levels to meet equitable education? Um, for ELL students being allocated throughout the district, okay? And taking into account like the weighted student count that uh, the district tallies where they're doing equitable education budgets, like it's 1.5 kids is the ELL um, student equals that. We have a high population of that. Are we seeing those funds One coming minute. to our schools? And yeah, I mean, this, how is it contributing? I mean, we contribute greatly to the ELL equity in this district, so how are the funds um, reflecting that? Okay. That's all. So. Thank you, Ms. Lennon. Thank you. All right, you have one more. Uh, is it Tammy Ashney? Yeah. Okay. What was the last name, please? Ashley. Ashley. Welcome. So Thank like, you. Thank you. Looks like this, this is on. Um, I'm Tammy Ashney. I'm a mama of two kids at um, Jennings Lodge in Candy Lane. So I'm within the Oregon City School District. I'm also an educator. I teach in higher education, so I am a professor. I'm also trained in early childhood education, and I'm a doctor. And um, I also have previously been a migrant education um, tutor. I'm really invested in the bilingual program, but my specific questions today are around the budget, because I know that that's what y'all are here for. Um, gosh, this is nerve-wracking nerve having a lot of, I've been, been this nervous since I had my interviews <laughs> for um, my job, but my understanding is that enrollment is down um, across the school district by 15%, but I'm curious about how that is reflected within our program, because our enrollment is not down within the Todos Unidos program, and it has remained consistent, and actually we have moved to a lottery system because so many people are interested in the bilingual program. So if we remain consistent, how is the budget, if it's changing and if it's reducing, how is it reflecting the robust program that our parents and our kids really are wanting, and other districts are coming to us with their children wanting this education? So if we're reducing the program and potentially reallocating uh, teachers and other positions, and I don't know if that's exactly what's happening, but that's, you know, the murmurings that we're hearing. Um, how is our program, and it's already kind of been mentioned, reflected in the budget? And we're just not seeing line items for our program, so our program isn't actually a program. It's, it said it's a program, but my concern is that we need to see line items for what the program, exactly where the funds are going for that program. So. What I'm asking um, is just, the big ask is that the program indeed be classified within the budget and it be seen as it's its own distinct program that is um, unique and individual within the Oregon City School District. One minute. Thank you. Um, and just concerns about, um, we've seen that they're saying that the, uh, the program is not being um, either change or reduced, but we are seeing reallocation. And reallocation to me means potentially less of what we had before. And that is the concern that the parents are coming with today. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you for being here.
Was that the last one? It is. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Okay, uh, moving on to action items. Uh, item 2122-253, adopt the 2022-23 budget. Do I hear a motion with respect to this action item? Ch Chair Philpott, this is Pamela White. Um, I move that we adopt the 2022-23 budget, which is Resolution 2122-253. Do I hear a second? I'll second. Any discussion? I think on, as our patrons come in and give input and there's not a really a question and answer period and I think we could ask some of those questions now but I don't know if this is the appropriate time or if some I know John was taking notes on some of the stuff over there about the weighted um, where that money goes and how that how that's funded um, we're really voting on the big picture here and the line items and and, and stuff so um, I think the board is committed to the bilingual program. Um, having kids that gone through it and seen the benefits and coached kids in our community. Um, there's contingency funds in the budget and there's 10% changes we can make to the budget if the board does not like what's going on. I think there are some mechanics to go and is, is that correct? And I could ask the CFO that. There is a contingency line item that is typically held for unforeseen circumstances. Like a program being cut that the board didn't want. Maybe. Michael's smiling. <laughs> <laughs> is that for earthquakes or what do we, what's yeah, the contingency? There's like yeah. 800,000 in I believe. Uh, it sounds like a lot. It's not as much as it feels when you're looking at a budget this big. It's really for, if we were to have an HVAC unit go out or something like that. We have really, remember, we cut the capital set-asides really low. And so if any of our heaters or air goes out, just one, capital's gone. So that 800 is for anything like that. I mean, you can use it for whatever you want, but just as, well, as, as we do our, you know. There's creative um, ways is what I'm saying. Um, and then if there are more students come back and we go above the floor funding, there will be more more dollars brought into the district that can go to. Correct. And then another note is this is just a plan. It's yeah. not actual. So this just gives us the authority to move forward with the plan, but changes can be made. And I, I think it, it bears some discussion to discuss what our role is <clears throat> and how deeply the board has the authority to go down into the budget for mm -hmm. lack of a better term or description. And as a board, what our role is, is to pr approve the 10,000 foot view of a budget. It is not our authority to say how specifically after that 10,000 foot view is approved, how specifically those funds are spent. However, it is within our province to speak our mind and let the administration know what we feel about certain programs or certain ways to expend the funds that we are approving. But we by no means have authority to say, spend it directly on this. Okay. So um, I, outside of a larger category, right? <laughs> a category of staff, right? But we can't really say what staff, for example. Um, and so what I would like to say is it's so very important that you folks are here. It's so very important that you give us your feedback. Uh, we listen to it. We, uh, I, I feel very strongly about this program and that it needs to remain and it needs to be robust and it's a wonderful thing, not only for the first language speakers, but even for the 
primary English speakers. It is a program of equity. Um, it builds relationships. Um, it builds understanding and the continuity is very important. And I, I do believe that all of the board members feel similar to that, if not the same. And I think we've made that known. But it is important for the administration, and that would be the incoming superintendent, to continue to hear your message um, because those decisions are made at that level. They're made at the administration level, not at the board level. Uh, so, but, but here is your forum, and, and here is where we hear you, here's where the administration hears you, and if you are really uh, intent, which I think you are, and passionate, there's no harm in expressing and continuing to express your support for this program. Mm -hmm. And there, there is room for change within the budget um, regarding allocation of funds. Once we approve the budget, again, the administration gets to decide what, what happens with to that. Some and to some degree, yeah. yes. Um, and, and your input is valuable to that process. So thank you for being here. Director White. Yeah, so I likewise want to say that um, I believe I can say unequivocally, it almost didn't come out that, um, I know I personally and I know uh, everyone that I've talked to on the board, we are proud of that program, of the, of the bilingual program. We believe in it and if I'm not mistaken, uh, I remember when we were interviewing Dr. Spitzer, she kind of grinned at us and said, I'd like to see this go K-12. So the idea that this program will go away, um, I hope you will take a deep breath and work with us towards seeing how um, we can continue to make it robust. Everyone, we're having to juggle everything, right? And, it, and the administration has literally swept tears probably and blood uh, um, metaphorically to create a budget that everyone can live with. So thank you for being here. I agree with, with Chair Philpott that, um, and having been, <laughs> I have five children of my own, they're all adults now, but very active in their schooling process and it makes such a difference for your kids and for all of our kids. So thank you and let's work together and, and, and keep coming to the table to make sure that we are together making sure that this program um, is everything we want it to be as a community. Any further discussion? Okay. I'll just say on the I'll, one more thing, just on the budget as a whole, um, and I know uh, the chair of the budget committee, and I'm gonna Lisa Bowie. Lisa Bowie, sorry, Lisa. Um, and we talked extensively after the whole process that the process needs to be revamped, how we do it, how we look at it, how we talk about it, how we engage the community, and I think we can do better as a budget committee. And I know uh, the administration got thrown a curveball, a bunch of them, COVID and roll enrollment, enrollment, and um, you know, I just challenge this board that this coming year we, we go and we tackle this because we cannot go through year after year of we have no money and uh, we gotta figure it out. We, got, we can do better for our kids, we can do better for our taxpayers, we can do better for our facilities. Um, you know, we're, we lose kids every day to different programs and the bio, like I said, the bilingual program is one that's keeping them, so we gotta make sure it's robust, but I think we really need to uh, scrub it, look at it hard, and, 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 and you know, do good work here. And I, nothing against the admin. You guys had your hands full um, with this budget, and I appreciate everything you did, and I'm, I'm still not happy with it, so um, it's, it is what it is, so. Okay. Any further comments? Director Saul, did you have a comment? Will you be sure to raise your hand if you would like to speak? Did we check to see if he could hear us? Oh, oh no, I can hear you, oh, thanks. Oh, oh, <laughs> he has a brand new child. <laughs> Thank you, sorry. <laughs> um, okay. That's okay, oh. thanks for checking. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> All right, uh, hearing no further discussion, Ms. Beck, could you pull the board, please? 
Director Stroh? Aye. Director Soule? Aye. Director Canchola? Nay. Director Hayes? Nay. Director White? Aye. Director Philpott? Aye. Uh, motion carries. 2122-253, adopt the 2022-23 budget shall carry. Moving on to 2122-254, budget make budget appropriations for 2022-2023. Do I hear an item with a motion with respect to this budget item or agenda item, sorry. Chair Philpott, I would move uh, that we make the uh, posted budget appropriations for 2022-23, resolution 2122-254. Do I hear a second with respect to this motion? I will second. Any discussion? Hearing none, Ms. Beck, could you pull the board, please? Director Canchola? Nay. Director Stroh? Aye. Director Soule? Aye. <laughs> Director Hayes? Nay. Director White? Aye. Director Philpott? Aye. Motion carries. 2122-254, make budget appropriations for 2022-23 shall carry. Moving on to the next item, 2122-255, resolution imposing and categorizing taxes. Do I hear a motion with respect to this? agenda item. <laughs> okay. I will, Chair Philpott, I will move uh, that we, uh, I move to adopt resolution 2122-255, the resolution imposing and categorizing taxes. Do I hear a second with respect to this motion? Second. Any discussion? I, I just Director want White. the public to know that this is uh, essentially the, the county. Oh, you're myself off. Yeah. yeah. Um, that the county tells us how it is that we meet the goal that the taxpayers have agreed to provide for education. So really this is just us acknowledging that and um, allowing the county then to add this information as uh, resolved to, the, to their tax policy, tax law. In order to collect the funds. Yes, in order to To distribute the to the school mm -hmm. as required by our budget. Right, Yes. thanks. Took two of sure. us, but we got it out. <laughs> Very good, thank you. Any further discussion? Okay. Hearing none, Ms. Beck, could you pull the board, please? Director Canchola? Aye. Director Hayes? Aye. Director Soul? Aye. No, baby. Director Stroh? Aye. Director White? Aye. Director Philpott? Aye. Motion carries. Did we hear from Director Cantola? Mm -hmm. It was first. Sorry, I missed that. Sorry. Okay, 2122-255 uh, resolution imposing and categorizing taxes shall carry. Okay. Um, oh. 
That's it. Okay. I'm sorry. The other one is for the special session. Um, any other items of business related to the public budget hearing? None. Hearing none, we will go ahead and adjourn. Thank you. Uh, we will reconvene in 10 minutes for the special session. Thank you.
my mic is not on, Director Farmer, um, who is unable to attend today. But we do have Director Soul present uh, electronically via Zoom. And we also have Superintendent Layer present attending electronically via Zoom feed. Uh, the first item on the agenda is patron input. Mr. Sweeten, do we have any input on the special session agenda items? You have no in-person input. Okay. And no, no over Zoom as well from the okay. spec. Thank you. Great. Thank you. All right. Action items 2122-20. Approve assistant, uh, uh, approve assistant superintendent contract. Do I hear a motion with respect to this action item? I would like to make a motion to approve action items 2122-20, approve assistant superintendent contract, and B, 2122- Wait, we're doing one at a time? Is, it's action item, so. But it's not oh. a consent agenda. Okay, gotcha. So we're okay. just doing one at a time. There we go. So. Can you restate your motion, please, since you didn't finish like making motion. one? <laughs> I would like to make a motion to approve action item A, 2122-20, approve assistant superintendent contract. Do I hear a second? I'll second. Is there any discussion? Uh, I just want to say thank you for your patience. Um, I got to actually sit down with the incoming superintendent, Dr. Spitzer, and me and her had a great talk. I did want to get her input. I did talk to John Ogden as well, so I got a little bit more understanding, and I just want to thank the board members for being so patient with me last week because of uh, the late tie, and I know it's kind of hitting the, the I think it's like, what, three days? <laughs> so I apologize <laughs> if you were, like, nervous, but I said it wasn't about you, and I, I just really hope you understand that, so, <laughs> yeah. Any other discussion? Hearing none, Ms. Beck, could you pull the board, please? Director White? Aye. Director Soule? Yep. Aye. Director Cantola? Aye. Director Stroh? Aye. Director Hayes? Aye. Director Philpot? Aye. Motion carries. 2122-20, approve assistant superintendent contract shall carry. Moving on to 2122-256, approve 2022-23 contract for safe corporation for workers' compensation insurance. Do I hear a motion with respect to this agenda item? I motion to approve action item 2122-256. Approve 2022-23 contract with safe corporation for workers' compensation insurance. Do I hear a second with respect I'll second. to this motion? Thank you. Any discussion? Hearing none, Ms. Beck, could you pull the board, please? Director Canchola? Aye. Director Hayes? Aye. Director Soule? Aye. Director White? Aye. Director Stroh? Aye. Director Philpot? Aye. Motion carries. 2122-256, approve 2022-23 contract with Safe Corporation for Workers' Compensation Insurance shall carry. Any further board business for this evening? Director White. I would just like to um, say thank you to Interim Superintendent Lair for not only his service this last year, but also for the many years um, he has done really good things in this district. He helped us put case on the map, so to speak, and um, has continued to do really wonderful work on behalf of the district. Thank you, Kyle, and we will miss you. Thank you, Thank you Director Ryan. <laughs> I'm sorry, Superintendent Lair, I cut you off. Go ahead. I know it's strange not being able to, to barely see you guys. I know you can't see me right now, but I just, just thank you, Director White. I appreciate that. Thank you. I would also like to thank you, Kyle. I, I know the, I, I, I only know a snippet of the amount of time that you have put in um, here at the district because I haven't been here very long. Um, but I know that you were answering my phone calls at 11 p.m. and at 6 in the morning. Um, and I, I know that you were always striving to be communicative um, with me. And, and I really appreciate that. And, I, and the level of attention that you provided that uh, 
was clearly indicative of your overall work ethic. Um, and so I, I do believe that that's the way you uh, managed yourself and handled your day-to-day -day duties here with the district. Um, and I think that's outstanding. So thank you very much. Thank you, Chair Philpott. Anything else? Thanks, Kyle. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. Director White would like to know if you have anything to say. Kyle. Well, thank you. Yeah, like I said, it's a it's it's a little bit awkward being away. This is definitely not the way I uh, would have planned my last public meeting. Uh, I wish I was there with you, but I it, it has been a, a wonderful run of about 17 years over two stints in the Oregon City School District, and I know um, had an opportunity to connect with a lot of employees um, and former students over the past several weeks, and just appreciate all the kind words and the thanks, and uh, definitely gonna miss those that, that I've worked with for so long. Uh, wish Oregon City the best and, and look forward to seeing where things go in the future. All right, thank you. This meeting is adjourned. <laughs>